China. 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 The world is reeling under the pressure of unprecedented challenges. First, there was COVID. Not only it destroyed economies all around the world, and by effect pushed countless people back into poverty, but more catastrophically, it also led to the demise of millions of people, the implications of which cannot be even measured. And if that wasn't already enough, the Ukraine war has further worsened the situation. Central banks all around the world are struggling hard to control record-breaking inflation. But leaving this current state of affairs aside, there are more systemic and continuing challenges to a world order that pose a far greater threat in the longer run. Welcome to Geostrata, a youth-run and independent think tank organization. In today's episode, we're going to be looking at the upcoming National Congress of the Communist Party of China and what sort of effects it is likely to have all over the world. So let's begin. The ongoing geopolitical contestations, the far predate the COVID. And if there is one country that has been at the very center of it, it is the People's Republic of China. Now the country has been on an aggressive expansion mission both along its land and maritime borders. For example, from clashing with India along the LEC to the recent military drills all around Taiwan after Mrs. Pelosi's visit to what it considers as a province of its own. Now, China's quest for dominance as the world's primary hegemon, it's not recent. But since 2012, when Xi Jinping rose as the leader of the Chinese Communist Party, he has been at the very focal center at leading a significant and renewed push on the part of China to achieve this status by 2049. Time and again, in several speeches, Mr. Xi has not only acknowledged but reaffirmed this pledge of his, thus granting official mandate to the said objective. Now, in China's scheme of political and administrative system, the CCP reigns supreme. It is quite practically the be-all and the end-all institution in the country. And Mr. Xi sits at the very heart of this centralized organization of power. However, this is not to say that the party has ceded all its powers into his hands. No matter how authoritarian Mr. Xi becomes, he still needs, in principle, the mandate of the party a public recognition of its support for Mr. Xi's leadership. And this is where China's upcoming and 20th National Congress assumes critical importance, both for Mr. Xi's political future and in a way for the global order, for Mr. Xi's future will decide which way China leads in terms of its policies. But what exactly is the National Congress? Quite simply, it happens once every five years and includes delegates of the party representing different provinces and branches of the government. Now, the National Congress has emerged as the party's official forum for deciding upon two of its most important processes, amending the constitution and legitimizing changes in the leadership. The latter not only means choosing the general secretary of the party and by effect the president, but also in electing the Politburo Standing Committee which is the party's highest decision-making body. The general importance of the upcoming National Congress, it can be gauged from looking back to the previous one. For starters, the 19th National Congress etched Mr. Xi's ideology, officially called as Xi Jinping thought on socialism with Chinese characteristics for a new era into the Chinese constitution. Now, by effect, this move has raised Mr. Xi's stature equally to that of Mao and Mr. Deng Xiaoping, if not higher. Further, in 2018, the two-term limit on the tenure of Chinese presidents was ended, therefore paving the way for an unprecedented third term for Mr. Xi. Despite Mr. Xi's massive control over the party, all is not rosy in his outlined path for the unprecedented third term. Now, if truth be told, it is extremely difficult to find out reliable information regarding what goes on inside the doors of the Communist Party of China, least of all the internal discontents and opposition to the powers that be. Therefore, anyone trying to predict the same, it's like entering into speculative territories. 
However, that should not prevent efforts on our part to make logical guesses or predictions for whatever transpires within the CCP has the likelihood of having effects all over the world. Having said that, a third term for Mr. Xi is likely guaranteed. However, what remains to be seen is that how many of Mr. Xi's close associates or the people seen as his likely rivals are incorporated into the major restructuring of the party's leadership. Precisely within the 25 member strong new Politburo and the 7 member strong Politburo Standing Committee. Amidst all of this, the CCP it continues to face several headwinds. Geopolitically, China fears that it is getting contained, whether it be by Quad, AUKUS or several other bilateral and multilateral alliances that are focused on the Indo-Pacific. Additionally, the BRI projects have acquired a negative and dark connotation, for not only they have significantly failed to bring prosperity to the nation-states, but they have also put the governments under severe debts. For example, Sri Lanka's case is hidden from no one. Or we could look at Pakistan, the China's all-weather ally. The CPEC has quite remarkably failed to take off yet. Even domestically, the Chinese economy is reeling under structural pressures. The growth rate is declining, massive government crackdown on monopolies in the tech sector it poses a threat to innovation. And perhaps more importantly, the country's real estate sector, which roughly commands a share of whopping 30% of the country's total output and showing several signals of imploding. This is roughly a broad context in which the Chinese president Mr. Xi is heading for an unprecedented third term. Whatever the results, the world will eagerly watch out. Thanks for watching.